So when we're talking about the causes, definitely we say that if a patient is not immunocompromised, patient's chest X-ray not showing a, anything there, in those cases, these are the majority, make the majority of the diagnosis, asthma, GRT, and USCS up to the level of 90%. USCS is upper air, uh, airway cough syndrome. Previously, it is known as post-nasal drip. So nomenclature been changed uh, recently. Recently means few years. Now, there are certain other things apart from this we have to be careful about. One is drug-induced. I will talk in detail about the drug-induced cough because I find something very interesting uh, in this drug-induced thing. And smoking, not only smokers cough, we know that COPD, TB, neoplasm, all can be associated with smoking. Non-asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis, so it's not asthma. There is no dynal variation. There is no wheeze, but people still have this T2 markers high. I will talk about this T2 markers. Obesity and obstructive sleep apnea, these are the two condition of cough, which sometimes we miss. So unless you probe, you might not find the cause behind it. Occupational, uh, so something in the, so it is not just occupational uh, thing which triggered like asbestosis or silicosis. I'm not talking about that. Something there which is triggering it off. So it may be recent thing or it may be a chronic thing. So we have to be very careful. So they might say that when I'm going to the office those five days, I'm really unwell and Saturday, Sunday, I'm recovering. And again, when I'm going back, problem with this patient, they sometimes ask for leave. If you are signing them off, whenever they are going back, they're again coming back with the same problem. So it's a problem for their maintaining their job. So you have to probe a bit more. Psychogenic cough or somatic cough disorder, this is uh, taking a huge place in this cough diagnosis or cough management nowadays, a very interesting area. So we will cover all this. Other causes of chronic cough, I just don't go by the list that this or that tuberculosis, we all know it's a major cause in our country. Bronchiectasis, maybe post-tubercular bronchiectasis, or maybe due to some other post-infection. Sarcoidosis, yes, it is quite common in our country. So uh, uh, you unless you know, and always they are not uh, presenting with this lung symptom, they are having all other symptoms, even the erythema nodosum. So it is your responsibility to connect this. Bronchogenic carcinoma, we already mentioned now, COPD. All patients of COPD does not come up with cough, but there is a COPD asthma overlap patients. So these are the patients mainly present with cough and they respond very well to steroids while only COPD patients where their other drugs are more important. Congestive heart failure and the other conditions when we mention this chronic aspiration in adults, fungal infection, they are not that common. Foreign body in the... Uh, are they in children and cystic fibrosis? These are the common, these are the two causes, but it's not the common causes in children. When we talk about the causes in children, it's a it, few things are important here. Now, type of cough in children and how long it persists and whether it is continuous, these three things you have to remember. If it is just a dry cough, not much to worry about. If it is a weighty cough, what it is happening intermittently, maybe some infection is there, you're treating it partially, and again, another infection, which is common. But if there is a persistent weighty cough in a child for eight weeks, that really you need to investigate that child very well. And with the child, sometimes they can't expect it. Expect you ask the adults that when there is a wetty cough, are you bringing up anything? What is the color of the flame? But with the child, you don't have that advantage of just inspecting this expectoration. So in that case, you have to check whether there is any clubbing. You have to put the hand on the child's chest to pick up some noise. Interestingly, even if you put the stetho, at that point, there might not be anything. So if you find this kind of thing in a child going on for some time, 
So in this case, there are three types of cough we have to remember in the child. One is the infection, which accounts for 40%. GRD, which is not really ready cough all the time. And another interesting area in the child is psychogenic cough. Because a lot of children are nowadays suffering from a lot of stress. Stress from academia, stress from school, stress from parents and whatever. And they sometimes have a hacking type of cough. Just it uh, sounds like whoop, uh, whooping cough. <coughs> this kind of thing. And it is just keep on increasing in intensity and frequency. This kind of cough is sometimes we call habit cough or psychogenic cough. For children, these are the important cough you have to remember.